think about how much time. That's an extra. I mean, they can't get more than four plays if they kept, kept him in bounds. Well, you keep him in bounds now. The game's over if they keep him in game. bounds. Dak has to get this out of bounds or he's taking a shot to the end zone. This is scary because I would take a shot to the end zone here when they're in the sideline defense because you actually can hold on to the ball. You need someone, San Francisco, to get to the quarterback here. Prescott takes off running the football. Whoa, I don't think this is going to work out. It will. They'll be able to clock this. They were playing for it. It's Four. down, down. Oh, my gosh. Oh, the official gets in the way. The game's oh over. Gosh. The game is over. So, here we are again. Another year where Cowboys fans believe their team would make a real run, only to realize that their team is completely fraudulent. This last play in the wild card round fully summarizes what this team is. Self-destructive and completely unaware of common sense. Now, there were tons of red flags during the season, all things considered. But we were having such a good season, nobody cared. Leading the league in takeaways, the emergence of Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs, the defense not being a complete dumpster fire, Dak Prescott looking like he was taking the next step. The last time the Cowboys made any real noise in the postseason, it was still socially acceptable to listen to R. Kelly in public spaces. Being a Cowboys fan nowadays is a lot like being in an abusive relationship. You always hope that things will get better, but you're constantly left feeling empty, disappointed, and full of regret. Now, in order to fully understand this clown show, we really have to start all the way back at week one. I would say start preseason, but we all know nobody cares about preseason. Come on now. A week one matchup against the defending Super Bowl champions is a tall task, but the Cowboys come out to respond. They play a tough game and take the ball out of the Bucks' hands constantly while Dak Prescott lights up their defense like Christmas lights in a suburban middle class area. The Lombardi will look great in the Dallas Cowboys trophy case. Unfortunately, Tom Brady sold his soul in a previous life and proceeds to do what he does best, deflate everyone's balls. However, this can be seen as a moral victory. Yeah, there were eight penalties, but I'm sure this won't be a trend. The Cowboys go on to play the Chargers in LA, and it's a tough game. I'm sure the Chargers players are just happy to have some fans, even though it's more likely that people off the street wandered in by accident looking for the restroom. The Cowboys are able to defeat this young Chargers team with a mix of a solid running and passing attack. Eight more penalties, and Mike McCarthy almost completely botched the field goal attempt. But hey, we got the dub, and that's all that matters. Hey look everyone, it's one of the Cowboys' favorite punching bags in the Eagles. To be fair, every team in the NFC least looks like a punching bag, but the Eagles hold a special place in every Cowboy fan's heart. Dallas proceeds to beat them as senseless as Tyson Fury beat up Wilder in their second bout. Super Bowl, here we come. The Panthers are coming in undefeated to AT&T Stadium, but Dallas is more than happy to welcome them. Dallas is taking over the game in the second half after a slow first half. 20 unanswered points in the third quarter, which helps them have a cushion in the fourth when Carolina makes a surge. Sam Darnold is quite literally having Vietnam flashbacks to his days with the Jets as he sees more ghosts in the Dallas Cowboys secondary. Best win of the season up to this point. Playing against the Giants should be considered a form of bullying as they look about as capable as kids stuffed in elementary school lockers. Danny Derptime Jones was knocked out of the game only to have Mike Lennon come in and pretend to be a professional quarterback. Saquon Barkley suffers a terrible injury. Dallas beat up a literal handicap team. Basically a bye week. The Patriots are trying to rebuild their empire as the Cowboys come to try and pillage the remains of the once great dynasty. However, New England makes it tough and won't go quietly as it soon becomes a fierce battle. Dallas, of course, manages to squeeze out a victory in overtime, and Dak has been looking great along with the defense being very turnover happy. However, Dak suffers an injury and might be out for a few weeks. In a game where Dak will not be available, the Cowboys start former rock star sensation Cooper Rush. It's not looking good early as it becomes obvious why they paid Dak the big bags. The defense, however, manages to keep the Kirk Cousins narrative of being bad against good teams alive as they manage to scrape by the Vikings. With great help from the defense and the offensive star power surrounding Rush, Dallas really is heading to the Super Bowl. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. 
<laughs> Did I say the Super Bowl? I meant the Toilet Bowl, as Dallas proceeds to have a performance the equivalent of spraying diarrhea all over the seat. Dak looked off, the O-line was being dominated, Teddy Bridgewater looked like Andrew Luck, and nothing was clicking until Dak decided to pad his stats in the fourth to make the game seem closer than it was. Big Fangio got up to brag, which only makes this loss worse. Dallas definitely got a wake-up call. Okay, Dallas got their mojo back, as they completely eradicate any semblance of pride the Falcons had in this game. Everyone got to eat. Offense, defense, and special teams all played with a viciousness that made it seem like the Falcons sold the Cowboys players a malfunctioning television or iPhone. I'm surprised this was allowed on national television, considering how brutal this was. Well, on to the Chiefs for a statement game. Imagine a game where two offensive power teams have a pretty boring defensive battle. That's exactly what happened as Dallas and the offensive line once again got manhandled by a front four that couldn't be stopped. It's almost as if having a constantly injured and inconsistent O-line could be a problem. Dak Prescott once again played a good team and lost. Not exactly what you want to see, but the defense did slow down the mighty Chiefs and Arrowhead. Well, Thanksgiving game is up next, and I'm sure there will be quite a lot to be thankful for. Thankful? Psh, not even. If it's not one thing, it seems to be another with this team. The key word today is discipline. That's one thing the Cowboys don't seem to have any of, as they, along with the Raiders, proceeded to break rule after rule. Anthony Brown seemed unable to turn his head or avoid touching other players in the secondary. False starts, holding calls, and so forth. Both teams are top two in being the most penalized. McCarthy should, oh, I don't know, force his players to read the rule book in a sport they've been playing for years, instead of acting like they had never stepped onto a football field before. There were so many flags, you would have thought that both teams had questionable dating history. Another underachieving week. Injuries galore for the Saints have basically sapped them of any real firepower. The Cowboys march into New Orleans and handle business, although, albeit, very uninspiring. The defense had a party over tight end turned quarterback Taysom Hill, since Taysom was in a very giving mood, handing out interceptions to the defense like Tinder hands out STDs to the users. It's a W, so we'll take it. An important NFC East matchup turned into a competitive game, at the end mostly thanks to the offense of the Cowboys coming to a grinding halt. Early on, the defense of the Cowboys were giving Heineke a wedgie and swirlies for all the world to see, but they managed to scramble back and make it close. Defense once again does its job, while the offense has been looking extremely pedestrian as of late. The Giants return in a very unimportant matchup. The Giants are basically punting the season away after realizing their arena football caliber players aren't going to cut it. But hey, large drink, am I right? It's not a blowout due in part to the offense of the Cowboys seeming to be completely missing or on vacation, but they do enough. The defense manages to hold Mike Glennon's long neck and Jake from State Farm to six points. Hold your horses, everyone. The Cowboys seem to have unlocked their massive arsenal. The football team got absolutely ass blasted from start to finish. The beating they received was so massive, they developed amnesia and forgot who they were supposed to be fighting against. The Cowboys were firing on all cylinders, and a reeling Cardinals team is on the way. Great momentum for the Cowboys to go off of. Hmm, I think I've seen this one before. Dallas plays a good team and massively underperforms. Wow, what a trend this is. Dallas offense looked pretty much inept until the fourth quarter, where Dak Prescott starts padding his stats. Kyler Murray seems to grow an extra 10 inches whenever he plays in Texas and develops a sixth sense. Dallas defense tries their best, but it's not enough. Also doesn't help that several Cowboys players then blame this loss on the officiating. The Cowboys had 10 penalties on crucial plays that were completely avoidable. Does anyone know what the rules are on this team? It sure was nice of the Eagles to give the Cowboys a bye week. This game was nothing more than gaining some momentum towards the wild card round. The offense was clicking along with the defense. However, the Cowboys can't play the NFC East in the playoffs to get to the Super Bowl. They have to beat quality opponents, and the 49ers look dangerous and have a ton of momentum coming in. 
Let's hope Dallas can finally beat a good team this season. Let's keep it simple. The O-line got beat, killer penalties, 14 of them, no discipline, no awareness. Dak Prescott was horrible, yet he's paid like a top three quarterback. The defense kept the ship from sinking many times, plugging up all the holes. Zeke has not been that guy, and Kellen Moore is very questionable. Blaming the refs? That's absolutely loser talk. This season has given me perspective. The Cowboys are currently the kid who peaked in high school and has not done much in his adult years since. This was the year to do something. No team this season was truly dominant, and everyone had weaknesses. Unfortunately, Dallas will be losing players in the offseason due to them being over the cap. Fortunately, I'll be playing some Elden Ring to feel a bit happier. However, my feelings about this team and its management can be summed up in one scene. <laughs> They're both losers! Losers! Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to like and subscribe, and also shoot some comments on what you'd like to see next or things to improve. I'll be having more recaps of teams or athletes, live skits, and the start of a podcast. Enjoy your week.